Hello everyone, my name is Gus. Hi, I'm Woody. Today, I am a little scared about reacting to this video. Really? One Why? reason is, I haven't seen it. But people, you know, said, please react blindly, both of you. Okay. Second reason is that he talks about science, and every time we talk about science, you come out with the most ridiculous theories, and somehow people but get I behind feel like him. That's, I, I feel like I'm going to get some support here. That that's not fair to say to me, number one. <laughs> number two, my theories aren't ridiculous. They're just, I think, out of the box, and I'm a little bit ahead of you Okay. a lot of times, yeah. so I have to slowly catch you up. Okay, well, let's see how this one goes. I don't know what it's about. Me so neither. I have no judgment at all. Okay. could be amazing. It could be ridiculous. Let me see. I Okay. Venturing into the deep sea is something that humans were not designed for. Agree. Deep water can be fatal in the obvious way, drowning, but can also kill you in not so obvious ways, like decompression sickness, oxygen toxicity, or complications arising from nitrogen narcosis. Yes, absolutely. But as I discussed in the last video, these- <gasps> What complications can come from nitrogen narcosis? Because that's one thing- oh, Yeah, that's ahead. one thing I that, that some, people, some people don't understand. Is that nitrogen narcosis is caused by depth, by breathing compressed air at, at depth. Um, and the cure for it is to get shallower. Yeah, go yeah. up. It can it, it and it can, goes away. It can lead to death. You can we, we actually can do I just something got stupid, to yeah. talking about it actually. It's really weird this weekend. You mm. can get so narc that frankly, you're out of your mind and you actually will go deeper and deeper, which so indirectly it can cause you right. death. Correct. Complications don't come from the high pressure of the deep alone. Hmm. They all arise from breathing air under pressure. Yeah. This is why the really deepest true. scuba dive ever recorded is only 332 meters, which took Nuts. 12 minutes to reach and 15 hours to return from. And the deepest saturation dive was 701 meters. Wow. The deepest a human has ever been outside a submersible. Hmm. Going any deeper with current technology becomes excessively dangerous. Unless you By the way, there. every year oh. every year around April Fool's Day, people get like tricked into believing that people have dived at the Titanic. It's just funny to see. And people share it. They share it with us. They share it with me personally on mm -hmm. Facebook or Instagram or whatever. It's like, oh my God, they dove at the Titanic. You know, no. you know though, um, who could dive deeper and could stay down as long as they wanted, the, the guys in the abyss. Okay. When the aliens, right. which... Well, hold but, on. Can I finish? Okay, go ahead. When the guys in that movie... Breathe liquid oxygen, which has been tested. The problem was that you got pneumonia afterwards, but then the aliens, which I I know they've been here, they were somehow able to overcome that. I can't prove that scientifically yet. But for reference, many offshore oil fields lie beneath much deeper water than this, and all of them require constant maintenance. The Perdido oil field lies under nearly 2,450 meters of ocean, and the oil rigs that exist there are the world's deepest. Wow. Remotely operated vehicles have to be used for the deepest work, and this is not without its disadvantage. Even the best ROV operators are no substitute for having a human on the scene. Atmospheric diving suits have been Look invented that, to try that, to bridge the gap between saturation Stay divers and right? ROVs, keeping the person inside at one atmosphere of pressure. Quick comment about the ROV, uh, the the drone. We get this question for cave diving a lot. When we did the episode about Devil's Hole in Nevada, where there's a hole that goes into like an underwater lake that nobody has explored because it's super deep and apparently it's a sink or something uh, or a, high, a siphon. Um, they keep saying, so, why don't you send a robot? The challenge with robots is that until now, and we're recording this in 2022, there is no technology that can relay live video without a wire wireless underwater you can do it outside the water but in the water you need to have a wire connected to the rover and the problem with that is that if you're sending this rover on an unknown cave that you don't know where it goes up down left right whatever how do you how is the cable not going to get tangled and we've talked about this where in the past and we still have to do this so i don't i don't want to get into this yet because we we remain to do it but on the searching for ben mcdaniel uh, they were talking about sending a rover in, and I remember when they asked Ed if if he thought it was a good idea. That way, humans wouldn't because somebody died looking for him. 
uh, for Ben McDaniel. It's like, instead of risking more human lives, let's just send the rover. Ed said, and then you're going to have to pay me $25,000 to go get it when it gets tangled. <laughs> Right, because right. it was like a it's like a six figure ro it's like a very expensive robot. Ed said, "There is no way it's not gonna get tangled. So you're either gonna lose it, mm. or you're gonna have to pay me twenty five grand to go get it." But these suits are extremely heavy, hard to maneuver, and can only operate at a max depth of around six hundred meters. If there was a way to remove the limitations that breathing air at depth imposes on the body, then humans could, in theory, dive much deeper than they currently can as deep as the deepest oil rigs, maybe even to the bottom of the Mariana Trench. But you can't remove the need to breathe from the equation, and you can't remove the immense pressure that exists at the bottom of the ocean. But what you can remove is the need to breathe air. Ah, that's what I said. If humans could breathe liquid instead of air, many of the problems that deep sea exactly. divers face could be completely Where's my, eliminated. Where's my tin foil While hat? the idea seems crazy, the concept is straightforward on the surface. Instead of breathing oxygen-rich air, you breathe oxygen-rich liquid. As long as the alveoli in our lungs can receive and exchange enough oxygen, the they surprisingly don't rich. care how it gets there. And in Just theory, wait. liquid breathing could allow divers to go deeper than they ever have. Someday we because will. Because liquids can't be compressed in the same way that gas can. As the diver descends with lungs full of liquid, they won't be exposed to the huge partial pressure changes that happen when the lungs are filled with gas. This is coming. As I mentioned in the last video, Look at this. when breathing normal air under pressure, each breath taken contains many more molecules of oxygen and nitrogen than a breath taken at the surface due to the increased pressure. Perfect. And under more pressure, more and more nitrogen builds up in the body's tissues. This becomes a problem when the diver ascends and the nitrogen comes out of solution and creates dangerous bubbles, causing the condition known as the bends. And two? Is but with nitrogen? liquid in the lungs instead of air, the body would not become saturated with nitrogen at all. Decompression sickness and the long decompression times needed to avoid it could, in theory, be completely eliminated. Nitrogen narcosis too could be avoided, and oxygen toxicity would not be a problem since the level of oxygen being delivered to the body would remain constant. But in theory is the key phrase here. It all sounds good on paper, but can this actually work in real life? And in movies. It's long been a part of the sci-fi world, notably the James Cameron movie The Abyss, where it plays a central role. But ultimately, Talk. it's just Look. special effects, right? Uh, yes. Well, oh, yeah. for the humans it is, for now. but for the rat, that is not a special effect. Look. It is actually breathing liquid. So if the rat can do it, can we? No. How far off from reality is this idea for humans? Very far. It's not that far off from what I've read. It, and and I'm, I'm being on all serious now. What they have to, we'll see where this heads, but they have to overcome the pneumonia. Not just that. Because you're flooding your lungs with liquid. That's the hardest part. Uh, that I was talking to Doug Ebersol about it, mm -hmm. but, but you're not definitely, just that. But in the, but I hope everybody understands it, in theory why that would work. Let's say you let's say you could do it for a moment. Okay. All right. You've now eliminated that gas compression into your tissues. Okay, there is no gas compression into your tissues. It's liquid. But what about the other parts of your body that have gas, like your sinuses, like your ears, like yeah, but your mask even like how can you clear your ma because once you, you can't see anything with a flooded mask so you're not you can't blow liquid to equalize well, and flood your mask and then you can't see anything well but they're not wearing a uh faceless mask per se the way that they're portray i don't know but the way that they're mm. portraying it here is that you're in an a totally enclosed environment okay so you're not getting any squeezes from the outside environment otherwise okay. you have squeeze issues right yeah so, like you saw ed harris on that shot he has that thing completely flooded you can't see anything through water or whatever through liquid well we don't know we don't know what, what other you know things they may have are working on for the eyes and so forth but let's right. let's see where science takes it okay. will it happen in the future it will happen in the future the idea of liquid breathing has been around since the 1960s see, mm -hmm. where it He's was first studied mask. by the office of naval research to try to increase the escape depth from submarines scientists immersed mice in oxygenated saline in pressures of up to 160 atmospheres 
which is the pressure one mile below the surface. Wow. Depending on the pressure, temperature, and composition of the breathing medium, the mice could survive for several minutes and sometimes up to several hours breathing liquid. Amazing. So the concept of liquid breathing was proven in a way, but something was still ultimately killing the mice. They could not survive indefinitely in these experimental conditions. Scientists learned that they didn't die from too little oxygen being delivered to their bodies, as you might guess, but rather from too much carbon dioxide remaining in it. Oh. Respiratory acidosis is, is the condition that occurs when the lungs can't remove enough carbon dioxide produced by the body. Mm. The oxygenated saline solutions were not allowing enough CO2 to dissolve into it from the lungs, ultimately killing so the couldn't. mice. Your body can and make this it, brings us to the get first major challenge with liquid breathing. Oh, you can't to try to get, get around your body. this problem. Scientists knew that they needed to mm. find a liquid medium that could dissolve large amounts of both oxygen and CO2. Very few liquids have this property, except for silicone oils and perfluorocarbons, or PFCs. Oh After more experiments with mice, silicone oils proved to be toxic, and only PFCs remained as a possible solution to the CO2 problem. PFCs are a type of synthetic liquid, a hydrocarbon with the hydrogen replaced by fluorine. They are clear and odorless, and chemically and biologically inert. And on top of this, they are great at carrying oxygen and CO2. Wow. Chemically, PFCs are an ideal medium for carrying respiratory gases. But physically, using them to breathe is still extremely difficult in reality. And this brings us to the second major hurdle with liquid breathing. Even though they carry oxygen and CO2 well, PFCs have nearly twice the density of water which make them much more difficult to breathe in and out than air. Oh the lungs God. and diaphragm did not evolve to push that much mass in and out. The <laughs> average male lung capacity is 6 liters, and the average density of PFCs is 1.9 grams per milliliter, which means the diaphragm would need to push and pull around 12 kilograms of mass with each breath to fully inhale or exhale the liquid. So while the PFC medium may be able to dissolve a lot of oxygen and CO2, Moving enough of it in and out to keep up with the body's requirements becomes almost impossible. Hmm. CO2 buildup would still be a dangerous problem, especially under any amount of exertion. Oh man. But determined to push on with the experiments, the Office of Naval Research decided that the research progressed to the point of testing it on the first commercial diver. Would you want to be the However, test while this was guy? an important <laughs> milestone, this human trial wasn't a resounding success. <laughs> no! Lying on an operating table, the diver inhaled well-oxygenated liquid and was indeed able to breathe. Look but at, afterwards, look at that. he developed pneumonia there after they failed That's... to get rid of all of the liquid from his lungs. That's the issue. And this is the saying. third major problem with liquid breathing. Yeah. Returning to breathing air from liquid can be problematic or even fatal if all of the liquid isn't removed. While all these obstacles you should breathe, be enough to put off pneumonia. most research, some scientists and innovators are still trying to figure out a way to make liquid breathing for deep sea diving a reality. One inventor thinks he has come up with a plan to make it possible. He proposes using a compressible chest plate that would mechanically force liquid in and out of the lungs, along with a CO2 scrubbing device. No. The scrubbing device would take blood out of the body via a catheter inserted into the groin's femoral Amazing, vein. Man. I'm out. Like, then, it would well, I was out the blood through an a while ago. There's no room for failure. That would use soda That's lime to absorb the CO2 before returning the blood to the body. You know, so in theory, you know the risk bail of respiratory out? acidosis <laughs> could be eliminated, to there. allowing the divers to exert themselves and work for long periods under the sea. But if having a machine that forces liquid in and out of your lungs by crushing your rib cage and tubes coming out of your arteries doesn't sound bad enough, you are still oh, left with worse. the final and perhaps most horrible part of the entire idea of breathing liquid. You get paid minimum wage. Wait, you put on back the helmet, that up, I missed it that. Fills with actually right, breathing it, it in. Right, uh, what she said explain. actually breathing it in. That's Can what you she just said. Back it up five seconds and okay. not talk. <laughs> you are still left with the final and perhaps most horrible part of the entire idea of breathing liquid. Actually breathing it in. Oh. You put on the helmet, what I said. it fills with liquid, oh. and then you have to drown yourself in it. Uh, Even if I'm you rationally like know it will be okay, convincing your brainstem of that fact is a tall order. Every instinct you have will scream at you to not breathe it in. It will feel exactly the same as regular drowning, except in the final moment, in the last desperate gasp, you just don't die. 
No, thank you. It's hard to imagine any amount of training that could allow you to overcome the instinct of sheer panic. With all these hurdles, both biological and psychological, it seems like liquid breathing for deep sea diving is likely to remain a dream. However, all the research that's been done has not been for nothing. Liquid breathing, or liquid ventilation as it's called in the medical field, has huge potential to treat people with a range of lung problems. Premature babies born before 28 weeks in particular can have huge difficulties mm. breathing, often because their lungs have not developed enough to adjust from the liquid environment of the womb to breathing wow, air and gas that. form. Their underdeveloped alveoli lack vital surfactants, which stop the air sacs from sticking together when we exhale. To combat this, doctors have begun to use PFCs with remarkable success. The PFCs can act as a temporary surfactant, enabling gas exchange and giving the lungs time to finish developing. The technique is now also being tested in adults with lung injuries and as a drug delivery mechanism for people with COPD or cystic fibrosis. The medical applications for liquid ventilation will help to save countless lives. And as this research progresses, if an even better oxygen and CO2 carrier than PFCs is discovered, Maybe liquid breathing will one day take people to the bottom of the sea after all. It will. I have been obsessed with underwater exploration since I was a kid, <sighs> and the fact that so much of the ocean remains undiscovered is one of my favorite things to get excited about. Me too. And even outside of the purely natural world, the sea has so many hidden secrets of ancient civilizations that are waiting to be uncovered. What? The and Black Elliot. Sea in particular is known for its well-preserved shipwrecks which give historians an amazing look back in time. If you like learning about discoveries like this, then you should check out the Ocean Exploration Documentaries on CuriosityStream. CuriosityStream is a streaming... Alright, then she goes into a commercial. Um, what? I think it's fascinating. I think she did a great job of pointing out exactly what the issues are. Ultimately, the main issue became pneumonia, which mm. I started off saying that, and... Um, Dude, we, we it will can't... happen eventually, though. You know, every everything we think won't happen with technology, with you know man's ability to overcome, it will. We can't even get people to try scuba, and now we're gonna go tell people, "Don't worry about it. Drown, but you'll be okay." You're, n believe me, drown, drown. Don't believe me, drown. Well, it's not going to go quite like that. I mean, by the time it actually became a commercially available, there would be a mechanism that would make it obviously much easier than you having to somehow force yourself to take in that last breath of pure liquid to, for even a moment, feel like you're drowning. But I don't know. I just love that they're trying and they're thinking and that it does explain the issues of the fact that when we breathe gas right now, we can only go to such depth. So in theory, this is a, a way to overcome it if we could fix all the other problems that are associated with it. I, I love that they're that I love the way she talked about it. It was a really cool video. Yeah, the other thing is, and we've talked about this, the effect of pressure of the water only affects air or gas. The rest of your body doesn't feel it. Like, you don't feel more pressure in your arms or something when you're down at 100 feet versus 10 feet. That You don't feel anything. No. You can be at 300 feet and feel the same as you feel at 3 feet. Um, so the, the water is not putting enough pressure on you. But I think I've heard that at some point it does. Like... If you're 2,000 feet down or something like that, like if you're mm. a kilometer underwater, then you are you do feel it. Like okay. it's a lot of weight on top of you. Mm -hmm. So even if you were breathing liquid, this whole idea that we're going to go dive at the Mariana Trench makes no sense. It's it's impossible. I don't know. But well, that's, that's what I heard. Okay. I, I don't know either other than I wonder if those atmospheric suits would help offset that. With well, yeah, but the we liquid. have those now. Well, we that's what I'm saying. Things. So we just don't have the liquid part. Um, Combine the two. Maybe you got something. All right. Let's. We mentioned that we know someone who is a diver, certified diver, and has dived inside those one atmosphere suit called Newt suits, by the way. No, I haven't yet. You, you weren't talking about You'll me? You'll never do that. Uh, but. <laughs> don't say never. <laughs> but. 
If you haven't seen that interview that we had with Dr. Joe DiTuri, I'm going to leave it right here. He's awesome. See everybody. Join the Navy, they said.